Hello everyone and welcome to Jacket Educational Channel. So in this video we will discuss some of the important environmental chemistry related concepts by solving certain MCQ question. So there is a short playlist for you all for the environmental chemistry topic. You can check the link given in the description. And without wasting much time, let's start today's video. So the question is, in the air that is in atmosphere, nitrogen and oxygen occur naturally but they do not react to form oxides of nitrogen because of which of the following reasons. So you should read all the options correctly. And the reason why they are not forming the oxides of nitrogen is that option number 3 that is the reaction is endothermic. So let's see the chemistry behind it. So as we know that nitrogen and oxygen gas are the main components in the atmosphere that is nitrogen constitutes 78% of the total atmospheric gases and oxygen constitute 21% but they do not react to form oxides of nitrogen that are NOx this is because of the endothermic reaction so as you have discussed in the question endothermic reactions mean we need to give heat energy for a reaction to take place that is called as endothermic reaction and in the reaction in which heat is released that is called as exothermic reaction so what happens is the reaction between nitrogen and oxygen requires very high temperature that means that temperature to overcome the activation energy of these two elements is very high and this is not possible in the environment that's why nitrogen and oxygen are not combining in the atmosphere to produce oxides of nitrogen the next question is the compound essential for the process of photosynthesis has this element which element is essential for the process of photosynthesis in plants so here the correct option will be option number d yes magnesium is essential for the process of photosynthesis let's know the chemistry behind it so the magnesium fulfills several functions within the plant body and it is a central component for the chlorophyll chlorophyll which is responsible for the photosynthesis to take place in the plant because it supports the function to absorb the sunlight and produce the chemical energy from the light energy and magnesium also acts as a phosphorus carrier in plants and it is essential for the phosphate metabolism in the plant body and you should comment me in the comment section that whether magnesium is the macronutrient or micronutrient for the plants so the next question is the match the following we have to correctly match the layers of atmosphere with the function present in that atmosphere so here we will match one by one the troposphere is the densest layer of atmosphere so you should remember this one stratosphere is having the ozone layer thermosphere is having the ions so why thermosphere is having the ions because within this layer of the atmosphere uv radiation causes photo ionization or photo dissociation of molecules so as a result this photo dissociation and photo ionization produces ions and that's why the thermosphere constitutes the larger parts of the ionosphere region that's why thermosphere will match with ions next is exosphere so exosphere is known as the outer space of the atmosphere and mesosphere is the lowest temperature atmospheric region. You should know mesosphere is the lowest temperature and thermosphere is having the highest temperature in the atmospheric layers. So if you want to know more about the atmospheric layers and how to remember this, so you can check the link given in the description below. So the next question is which of the following statements is wrong related to ozone? So here the correct option which is wrong is option number 1. So we should not read this option because it can cause many confusion in our mind. We should read what are the correct statement. The correct statements are ozone can oxidize sulfur dioxide present in the atmosphere to sulfur trioxide. Next which is correct is ozone hole is thinning of ozone layer present in the stratosphere region and ozone is produced in the upper stratosphere region of the atmosphere by the action of UV rays on oxygen. So when oxygen that is O2 is attacked or is facing the UV rays, it splits into oxygen atom and then when other oxygen molecule is attached, then it forms the O3 that is ozone O2 plus singlet oxygen. The next question is sewage containing organic waste should not be disposed in water bodies because it causes major water pollution. 
So fishes in such a polluted water die because of which of the following reasons? So here the correct option will be option number 3. Yes, as this pollution increases that the organic waste are having nitrogen and phosphorus content. So what they do is they increase the organic components present in the water. As a result, algal bloom is seen. So this algae consume the dissolved oxygen in water to sustain their life. So as a result, the amount of dissolved oxygen in water decreases and the fishes in such polluted water die because of decrease in oxygen level. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is, the alum's capacity to purify water is due to what reason? So here, the correct option will be due to the properties of his impurities coagulation. So let's see the chemistry behind the alum's capacity to purify the water. So alum often refers to the potassium alum. So it is potassium alum and the formula you should remember, KALSO4 whole 2 dot 12 h2o so it is also known as the aluminium sulfate and it is added to the water that is to treat the water sample which is not pure in order to destabilize the mud particles suspended in it so mud particles will be having certain carcinogens certain particles which are charged to destabilize them this is used and this process is known as coagulation and alum helps in purifying water by aluminium so as you can see in the formula aluminium is present so this aluminium coagulates the mud particles along with the harmful particles and because of this coagulation it helps that's the aluminium ion with the oxidation state of aluminium plus 3 helps to group together so all these suspended solids are grouped together clumped together until they are removed with the help of other techniques so they are coming together and to make them come together at one place this aluminium that is alum is helpful for water purification. The next question is find the incorrect statement among the four options. So here the incorrect statement is option number D. So we will read after that after reading the correct statement. So BOD value that is of a clean water is less than 5 parts per million and drinking water pH according to the BIS limit should be between 6.5 to 8.5 level and carbon, sulfur and nitrogen oxides are the most widely spread air pollutants in the atmosphere. But this thing that is dissolved oxygen concentration below the 5 parts per million is ideal for the growth of fish is wrong because below that level it is not ideal for the growth of fish. The next question is the depletion of the ozone layer is caused due to which of the following chemicals. So most of us would have heard about the CFC but you have to say which of the following chemicals is responsible for the ozone layer depletion. And here the correct option will be option number C freons. So let's see what are freons. So freons are actually the trademark, they are the trademark of the company and it is the constituent of several simple fluorinated aliphatic organic compounds. Fluorinated means those who are constituting of fluorine and they are used in the commerce and industries and in addition to fluorine and carbon, these freons compound often contain hydrogen and chlorine or bromine. Thus, freons are types of the chlorofluorocarbons and hydrofluorocarbons which are related compounds responsible for the ozone layer depletion. The next question is, which of the following techniques is used for the reducing total dissolved solids present in the water? So here, the correct option will be option number D. Yes, both this ion exchange technique and distillation technique are used to reduce the amount of total dissolved solids present in the water. Let's move to the next question. The next question is, which of the following techniques is used to determine the concentration of order compounds in the given water sample? So here, the correct option will be option number C, stripping or air stripping technique is used to determine the concentration of order compounds in the given water sample. So you should note that it is very important. So what is this air stripping? Air stripping is actually not the treatment process 
but it is rather just a way to transfer the contaminants to one phase from another. So what are this transfer we will learn is the transferring of volatile compounds. So volatile organic compounds which are present in the liquid mostly in water they are producing the foul smell. So in order to transfer these components from the liquid that is water into air stream it is called as air streaming process. It is an environmental engineering technology used for the purification of groundwaters and wastewaters containing volatile compounds. So you should remember air stripping is the technique to transfer the volatile compounds from liquid to air stream. The next question is which of the following statements is true about the composition of calcium carbonate that is calcium carbonate CaCO3 in soft water. So here the correct option will be option number B. Yes, the limit for the calcium carbonate that is milligram per liter of water should be less than 60 for the soft water because if the hard water when we are calling when the water is having more than 60 milligram of calcium carbonate per liter it will be called as hard water so less than that will be called as soft water so the question is which of the following gases is not a greenhouse gas and it is one of the frequently asked question and the correct option will be option number one carbon monoxide is not a greenhouse gas but water vapor methane and ozone are one of the constituent for the greenhouse gas so you should know that the ozone is also a greenhouse gas because it constitute roughly 10 percent of the total human induced greenhouse effect yes what is this human induced greenhouse effect so greenhouse effect that is ghg effect you can say it is the normal phenomena that is naturally occurring in the atmosphere due to which we are able to control the temperature of the earth atmosphere if this is not happening that is the greenhouse phenomena then our earth temperature will be very low it will be very difficult to sustain so these compounds are helpful to create a particular and ambient temperature but when they are induced that is due to human effect they are increased and their concentration increases then it is called as human induced greenhouse effect which is harmful so overall greenhouse effect is not harmful but human induced greenhouse effect is harmful let's move to the next question the next question is photochemical smog occurs in warm dry and sunny climate so one of the following is not among the components of the photochemical smog so we have to identify which is not among the photochemical smog component and here the correct option will be option number three yes sulfur dioxide is not the component of photochemical smog because it is the component for the classical smog that is called as london smog and if you want to know the difference between photochemical smog classical smog i have already made a video the link is in the description it is one of the frequently asked question you can go and check it out let's move to the next question the next question is which of the following statements is not true about classical smog so we are again going into the types of smog so the correct option you should know and you should read the question and options and here the correct option will be option number one which is not true about the classical smog why because the main components are not produced by the action of sunlight because when it is sunlight coming it is telling about the photochemical smog which is involving pan oxides of nitrogen ozone and sunlight but here these statements are true about the classical smog that are they are produced in cold and humid climate they contain compounds of reducing nature and it contains smoke fog and sulfur dioxide the next question is the biochemical oxygen demand that is BOD is a measure of organic material present in water that is true so if the BOD value is less than 5 parts per million that indicates what kind of situation in the water sample so here if the BOD is less that means the water is very good very healthy so it is not polluted it is suitable for aquatic life so it is not suitable it will be also not coming under the correct option it is also rich in dissolved oxygen that means it is not in poor in dissolved oxygen it is having good amount of oxygen as a result the aquatic life can remain a sustainable life there so option number one will be the correct option so that's all in this part of the video i hope you have enjoyed this so if you like this video don't forget to give a thumbs up Subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed it and share it with your friends because sharing is caring. So see you guys in our next video.